This is Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions with Alistair Lynch, Tom Rockliffe and Dylan Leach. Who needs a week off? We do, apparently. Uh, Hello, everyone. Welcome to AFL Unpopular Opinions. The finals are here, but we decided we'll just have a little week off because that's what we do in the wonderful world of AFL. Hello, everyone. My name is Dylan Leach. Joining you from our brand new studios, if you don't mind, and you'll see it through the clips during the week as to our gorgeous new set we now have here at Ned's HQ. And for the first time in our new set, and the first time in a while I've seen them physically, Three-time premiership player for the Brisbane Lions, Alistair Lynch. Dylan, great to be on, Rocky. Yes, sir. How good's this? This is magnificent. Now they've got the new set, do we get the Coke and Sars straight after? Yeah, yeah. We're only ever going to do one show from the new set, but uh, it, it's good to at least have a, have a run out here um, while it's around. And also the man who built the foundations of the second place on the ladder club, Port Adelaide, played a few games for the Brisbane Lions as well. Mind you, Tom Rockliffe. Yeah, still good to be here. This is outstanding, this studio. So looking forward to it. Another exciting finals campaign coming up for both my old clubs, which is uh, exciting and really looking forward to it. Not sure about the week off. I'm with Lynchy um, in yeah. Lynchy's boat with have the week off before the grand final so it doesn't cost players a potential spot. But um, looking forward to taking a deep breath before we jump into it. Yeah, we'll get it out of the way. So we, we want the week off before the grand final and no wild card. That's basically our uh, program's yeah. position on yeah. these. And that also press- helps the um, have the Brownlow medal before the bye, before yeah. the grand final. Yeah. So everyone actually goes there and the winner's in the room. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be a bad thing. No, it wouldn't be a bad and thing. And for the concussion issues. Indeed. And uh, well, it could be some very interesting round 24 Brownlow uh, count as well, uh, given some of the performances from the favourites this weekend, which we will get into. Uh, a bit more of a scaled back show this week. We should note uh, the, we're giving the snapshot the bye because there's no football to preview. So Ryan has a full week to come back next week. So you're not going to spend as much time on the multi from last week? No, we're not. Guys. We'll, we'll mention it. <laughs> You'll mention it. And also, I was. I figured what we'd do with the multi this week, <laughs> we'll still have one, but yeah. I reckon we'll try beat Rugby League at their own game and then we can get you back involved. Oh, I'm back. You're Cause, back. Because that's my sweet spot. Yeah. <laughs> you love <laughs> Rugby League. Yeah. Hey, Sharkies. Yeah, yeah hey, you're Sharkies. sharkies. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're, you're excited about what's happening. I mean, I mean that, that's one of the great things about the buy. It's just a... Fantastic chance to just watch nothing but rugby league all weekend. FLW kicks off, deal. Yes, indeed. Looking forward to that as well. Boys, what did we take from round 24? It was um, Well, it was an eventful Sunday. The first two days were a bit meh. Uh, they clearly uh, organised it around the f- – well, they w- didn't think Melbourne Collingwood would be a dead rubber, but that was a dead rubber. But Saturday was definitely dead rubber Saturday. It probably, yeah, probably got the Friday night wrong, but – AFL will have to – you have to give AFL a pat on the back. I mean, the way it panned out, getting down to the, the last game, it's what they desired, what happened, um, and the, the the ups and – it was almost perfect. The Higgins mm. goal just put that anxiety on Carlton for a few hours. <laughs> it was just perfect for the AFL. So they, they copped some criticism. Uh, they've got a lot on their plate, but I think they've done that beautifully. They got the Sunday right. The first yeah. two days were a shambles. Um, yeah. The Friday night, but you, you got to have a. But what do you decent think? Game. Well, I mean, probably <coughs> Friday night you got to have the decent game. I think, or, or was it? Uh, you think not it was, that it was a decent, decent game. Was it Essendon, Brisbane, Friday night? Maybe. No, uh, Collingwood, Melbourne was on Friday. Yeah, no, no, you know, you needed, what, should have, what should have been there yeah. because you, the shit games were shit games. There's so all, there were, there's always going to be shit games. Yeah, and I think, but just the the Sunday, the, the theatre of Sunday was good. Yeah. I think you still got to need a big Friday night. So whether it was um, the Dogs and Giants at Marvel Stadium, I know it takes away from, but, but that game shouldn't be in Ballarat either on a Sunday. In the last not in round. the last round, no. Well, just with the conditions there, it's always blowing. Yeah, it's not the best footy. And Marvel Stadium, it'd be a sellout if it was the MCG. You know, it'd be it'd be. 55,000, wouldn't it? You, yeah. yeah. It's a proper so. rivalry, the Dogs and Giants as well. Oh, yeah. Um, With a lot riding on it. I, I'm i of the view that the AFL fixture department this year have actually had a shocker. Like they got Sunday right and they've been hedging bets the whole time and occasionally when you hedge your bets you do get some right as many of our listeners, mm-hmm. if not all of our listeners, will attest to. Um, if you... Play a bit of a if you if you gamble with our multis, the multis or the draw, but <laughs> it's become apparently it, it's so obvious that one of the things we've seen this year from the fixturing is that it's become so obsessed with the marketing, 
so obsessed with what's best for television when they actually don't need to uh, obey everything television does because television needs football more than football needs it. Yeah, it's um, a especially with, it is a partnership. It is a partnership, but it's also it's also they've also got a competition to run. So they drip feed the round twenty four fixture with almost under two weeks to go. Like sixteen days out, they release the schedule. They then mucked around with what was going on with Tasmania on the whatever whatever the industrial dispute was at Long oh, there's an electrical with, with the issue Twilight down there. thing. Yeah. How are um, they ever going to build a stadium if they're always on strike? Your tradies down well, there. Isn't that the whole well, country's on strike today? <laughs> isn't that? The yeah. CFMEU, yeah. You're, you're, and no, you we'll be a big, big shout out to the boys from the CFMEU, solidarity <laughs> all around. Let's just be you. nice. I, we've just had this set built. I don't want it trashed. I told you. Pikey, he's, yeah. he's very senior in the CFMEU in Victoria. Um, we'll get stuff built down in yeah. Tasmania. Don't worry about yeah, that. Exactly. Pi- well, Pikey can run the building side of yeah, the yeah, Tasmania. He's got Tasman the sword. Exactly. Um, so they they changed that on a whim with less than twenty four hours to go. It's not. Cut oh, you had to do that though. Well, you had to do you that. But they didn't. They didn't need to shift the Richmond. No, nah, come on. You like can't that. kick the shit out of the AFL for that. They had to move it to mitigate the chance that if the if there was an no, electrical issue, I, I'm using it as an example of how it. Imp- I'm not saying that them not moving the. Well, isn't that a pro about the other game? I'm talking about oh, the other right. games. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> talk about the other games. Um, and also, it's obvious that in week one of the finals, um, they've put the Western Bulldogs Hawthorne game on the Friday night at the MCG. Yes, it's going to get a big crowd. It's a big final in Melbourne. But it was obvious that the Bulldogs didn't want to play on Friday night because the Bulldogs, to their credit, are very passionate about their AFLW team and they didn't want to impact the first home game at Witten Oval. That seemed the obvious one to be Saturday night, didn't it? It did. With and, no one, tra- no one travelling. Exactly. Yeah. And also um, the Swans, they finished first, so they wanted a longer break uh, between prelims and uh, should yep. they get a week off. Um, and they're like, oh, no, we just want to do it because of these factors. It's like, no, you want to do it because Channel 7 was shit scared to show a Sydney derby on a Friday night. They want. They were more focused because, cha- especially in the case of Channel Seven, mm. who um, they always want a Victorian team on a Friday night because people like us, your hardcore footy fans, going to watch it on Fox because they're competing with Fox for the same eyeballs. So Seven's going to be like, well, no, we need a thing that's going to garner more interest. Even though the Sydney Derby is a fantastic rivalry, this is the fourth time they played in a final, but. Just to go to my point, it has become so obsessed about the marketing, it's actually becoming a bit more of it's it's wrecking the integrity of the draw of what is already a very compromised schedule. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows the fixture is compromised. It's the most compromised. There's too many shifts, chefs in the kitchen and whatnot, but it's become they've allowed the marketing to get in the way of it and we've seen it all year. Well, I think it's proven in the fact as well. We spoke a little bit just before before we come on air about the Western Bulldogs mm. have played more games at Adelaide Oval this year than they have at the MCG and their home finals at the MCG. Of course, of course, you've got to have the home yeah, the, the game at the MCG. I'm not arguing that, but it's quite quite humorous but, when they've played two yeah. games at the G and they get the home final. But they've there. played away games at Marvel against MCG yeah. clubs. As the home team, so they played Collingwood the MC- at Marvel Stadium on a Friday night, and Collingwood was the home team. Yeah, so, but, so that's good for the Bulldogs, though, isn't it? It is, but surely if the Bulldogs want to play finals to, and want to be more run, yeah, you, they you should want be to get the opportunity. To, they, sh- they, sh- they should want to play at Marvel, but if also if they've got to play finals at the MCG, surely the opportunity to play at the MCG during the year when it presents itself, when they are the away team to an MCG club, means they get the privilege of playing on the MCG. Now, any club that doesn't want to play at the MCG in September is kidding themselves. Like That is a terrible attitude to have. But, yeah, I just uh, – the fixture frustrating. Just, yeah, it, and it's just incredibly frustrating. And also they released the draw for the finals. Like, I could go on all day about it. But- <laughs> you could. <laughs> Jeez, you're harsh. They got the last day right. Oh, that's great. great. So we, we also got a multi up once this week. Oh, shit. We got a multi no, up once this not, year. Not, not this week. week. <laughs> Maybe on our personal accounts, but this year we got a multi up once. I went two from two this week. No. Yeah. I, I, what I, happened, I, though? <laughs> so who, where did it fall over? Well, you, oh, were you subbed in. You yeah, were I subbed in. You I, subbed, part of the I know. No, I, well what I, I subbed in for Ryan. Yeah, and I, so you had one crack. Uh, at I took it. the lines at the line, which in the first half thought was okay, and yeah. then that was just well, that was a tr- wasn't that a trash game? Worst game of call. <laughs> really? Yeah. 
Lions Essendon. Easily the worst first half of footy I've seen. Yeah, I wasn't really watching properly in the second half. No. Um, and I backed the Giants. Yeah, yeah you'd, be, you'd be flat with a few outs just before the bounce. Yeah, it was like the multi. Well, the multi was already out on Saturday night, oh, but yeah, I was right like, yeah. whatever. Anyway. Audio. What do you got from the weekend? You're from the weekend? Unpopular. What's unpopular? Um, What's outlandish. Outlandish? Yeah. All right. Outlandish because we'll talk about um, the Petrarca stuff later. We will. We, we will. will. That. Absolutely. Out, outlandish. Let's go. Um, I think that um, Hawthorne winning, th- what is it, 13 the last 16 games? Yeah. The only real loss was against Geelong where at they Geelong. got smacked, mm-hmm. but they were well in front at Port Adelaide and GWS. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have thought um, that's pretty easy. There's your coach of the year. Sam Mitchell. Sam Mitchell, coach of the year. They don't cough up that 47-point lead to Port Adelaide. They finish second. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. They and would, would well, they were 28 points up against GWS well, at yeah. three-quarter time, and they're home. And I remember in, in calling the game, you just GWS couldn't move the ball, and they got run over. Their most exciting team in football, Sam, what are they, zero and five start? Mm, yep. They've essentially been belted once – at, as you said, at Geelong yep. um, in the last 16 weeks. Outstanding coaching performance to turn them around with a young team mm-hmm. and to get the best out of them. D'Ambrosio in the Australian squad, what a coaching effort. It's either a great coaching effort or a slaughter from Essendon to let him go. It's slaughter from Essendon <laughs> as well. Or maybe Combo. it's a combination yeah. too. So I'll go um, Sam Mitchell, um, coach of the year. Well, coaching like, performance of the it's year. It's AFL Awards night on Thursday. 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 Does, does coach of the year get named then? I or think is so. That, is, that is it or is it coach of the year? Oh, no. Is coach of the year the I think that's, premiership coach? No, no, no. no, no he's no. the all, all he's a Jock McHale oh. medalist. Or something yeah, that's a Jock like McHale medalist. Anyway, all right, Sam Mitchell. I, no, think it, I think it is this week, isn't it? It is, yeah, Thursday, Thursday night, yeah. Because yeah, the uh, All-Australian yeah. squad, of course, has been announced. It's interesting uh, to guy. name the best coach before the season's over. But I think, yeah, it's, it's hard to argue now. Um, the numbers stack up. His ability to get the most out of that team. When you when you look back and where they were at, where they were positioned, and mm. they're literally one win away from had they beaten Port Adelaide. Not <laughs> they finished second. Mm. They finished yeah. second. So outstanding performance. Um, they're going to be hard to beat. That'll be probably the match of the – First week of finals, yeah. Dogs versus so, Hawks. That's probably the, worthy of the Friday night, but just say that we wanted it on the yeah. Friday night for that reason, mm-hmm. not for the usual but spin crap. How about the the disappointment of that game? Is the losers out? Yeah. <laughs> so one of the most exciting teams in recent t- um, months mm. is out of the comp. Wait, yeah. So it just doesn't but seem right. That's just the beauty of the ladder this yeah. year, because quite frankly, I think there's two teams in the top four who I would think would rather be who I'd probably, on a preference of who you'd rather stay in the finals, be playing elimination finals yeah. and to and vice versa. So I'd probably rather see a Geelong in an elimination final at the moment. Um, not poor. I think, yeah, but it's, it's that fourth spot. But I think Brisbane and the Bulldogs Hawthorne sort of denied themselves that fourth spot. I think they're more worthy of it than Geelong. And if we were doing the coach of the year at the end of the home and away season, yeah. How many times would have Ken Hinckley won Coach of the Year over the last five years? Once, I reckon definitely. Did he twenty? Because like, in, in, in the last, yeah. in the yeah, in the last five years, exactly. haven't they finished top four in four, four on four occasions? Yeah. First, That's second, pretty good coaching. Tenth in the home third, away. and is, second. Is yeah. Hawthorne's run to this year's finals one of the best of all time? Because I was looking back. For, so I've got way outside of ours. Outside of yours, but like in terms of just yeah. making a- no, seriously, yeah, no, we no. won sixteen in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of just a way to find yourself in the finals, because there has been some great stories over the years. Even teams that just finished eighth um, just were able to make it in the last ditch. Like when yeah. your club, the Brisbane Bears, first made it um, in ninety five. Yeah, um, Richmond won nine in a row in twenty fourteen, which was amazing at the time. Um, Hawthorne's turnaround, Carlton's turnaround. It, it'd Carlton be, and Giants It'd last be year. right up there. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Like, you forget yeah. about them. I think you'd have to do a bit of reflection to say yeah. it's all up there, but it's certainly featured amongst some of the best, but there's a lot, there has been a lot that you forget about and look mm. back on. Like Carlton's run last year was unbelievable. Yeah. They were about to sack Vossi, went on a oh, run. Oh, yeah, and, mid-season, yeah. And 30-odd points up in the first quarter against Brisbane. And I think they would have... 
they would have got to, I think, 16 games in a row yeah. if mm. they'd gone through and won the flag. Yeah. yeah. No, great performance. But, I mean, even when we had our run, we'd been thereabouts the two years prior. Yeah. But Hawthorne had been cellar, cellar dwellers dwells, yeah. for recent times and a 0-5 start. You think, oh, well, that, I think we all thought, well, that's where they are. Mm-hmm. They're probably not developing as quick as we thought. But, you know, they're a bottom four side. And then... Wooshka. The other thing as well, like we spoke about Jesse Hogan potentially being the story of the season last week. The other one that's incredible who I thought was a waste of time was Gunston. Yes. He he was well, on he, the outer at Brisbane, probably wouldn't cooked. have played and looked cooked. Yeah. And then he's gone back and straightened them up completely, just a different dynamic and element to the, the way they move the footy. Yeah, that, you're right. That's been a, a great pick, great move from both Hawthorne and Jack to go back. And his experience and what he's done with the, the young young team, he's been critical. So, no, it's a good call. It's amazing what happens when you've got some experienced players on your list uh, with a young squad. Uh, hint, hint, RFC. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom Lynch is out the door too. No, everyone's out the door yeah. apparently. Um, Tom, I'm curious to get your thoughts on your other club, Port Adelaide. Yeah. Their turnaround. So, well, eight weeks ago we're talking here on this show you know, there was that game against Brisbane, 20th anniversary of... Um, Wait, weeks ago we were talking about the call that uh, yeah, we're to, made yeah, yeah, to we're Kenny. You're calling into Kenny to check Belgium. on his welfare. There's signs <laughs> outside Alberton saying sack Hinkley. Um, there's board members at Port Adelaide on radio programs agreeing with Nuffy talkback callers demanding that he's be sacked. Don't do that, Lynchy, when you get... Yeah, <laughs> no, no, try the slipper into no, our coach. I think we've established, though, with Tasmania that the moment that people are doing that with Tassie FC, then you've made it as a club. I think we have already agreed to the moment that, that that's what you aspire to one day. As a, Rest assured, yeah. we've got already passionate supporters. Good. <laughs> what does it mean? And have you? what is the vibe at Port Adelaide? Because you, you, I, mean, I think you're probably closer to the Port Adelaide people these days than you are to Yeah, Lions. both. Yeah, probably. And, but the on turnaround Monday. of Port has been phenomenal. And we've said on this show before that Kenny is at his best when he's back against the wall and look what's happened. They've got a top two finish, um, two more wins at Adelaide Oval and they're playing in a grand final. It's pretty phenomenal. It's, yeah, it's crazy. I, for the first time on Sunday night, I believe they can win it. Um, funnily enough, I think they're the most almost complete team that I've seen um, from them in the last couple of years. Like they've lost Houston, obviously he's a big out. Farrell goes down as well, so it's going to be hard to replace those halfbackers. But Burn Jones goes to halfback. They they potentially might get one in the All Australian or none. Doesn't matter. And they've they've finished second on the ladder. They're probably the most like they're not besides the Sydney game when they played as well as they could have and Sydney played as bad as they could have. They're not blowing teams away, but they're, they're winning and finding a way to win. Um, even on the weekend, Fremantle had everything to play for, knew what was on the line and couldn't get over the top of them. And they found a way on Frio's home deck. So just they bob up at the right time. Um, they've got a potent forward half when they function properly. We've seen Dixon not there on the weekend. Marshall's not there, but um, Georgie Artis, when he's up and about, Radigalia has been a master stroke, I think, to go forward. So they've got to balance, I think, right. Um, the 10, 10 uh, extra days off, sorry, this week allows Aaliyah to get over that ankle. Um, so I think they're a genuine chance to win it. I, I think they get over Geelong. I think their midfield's going to be far too powerful. They did a number on them in the first quarter down in Geelong earlier this season. And then it's a matter of who they get in that prelim. How, then- how good are their, their midfield? I mean, we spoke briefly um, last week about it. But you compare and you have you look at um, the ambitions of other clubs and say Essendon to get up and compete for a flag. You compare someone like Essendon's midfield to Horn Francis, Butters, Rosie, Drew, Wines. I mean- it Boke. is. Um, Boat goes through there as well. Then you know Burgoyne, and they're they're oh Burgoyne are emerging to a high class right. player. And even you look at the likes of Sydney as well. Warner, Goulden, Heaney, Mills, Robottom, McInerney, Parker goes into yeah. that. I mean, you're right. They've built their team around this elite young midfield, and Radaglia playing a pivotal role up forward now. It, um, it's exciting times for them. Yeah, it is. I think their midfield balance—they 
struggled with it at times in they were too aggressive. So they had the, the three young there, guns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where I feel like Rosie's gone a little bit more half forward. So the balance is a little bit better. He pinches, it hits in there. But I think so he's Drew more good. in there. Drew's in there. Yeah. Wines, um, Ollie Wines, 250 games as well. Congratulations to him on the weekend. He was outstanding, had a good career. So I think their balance is right. Lockie Jones off half back. Um, Miles Bergman as well. He's a, a really good player. Um, so I think that they tick a lot of the boxes, whether they can uh, go all the way, but well, who knows. I've just had a look at the finals roadmap. Um, we could get a provided results go a certain way and this would be so very go. delightful <laughs> for you two. Uh, we could get a Port Adelaide-Brisbane grand final, which would mean a heap of jobs for you, Tom, <laughs> and you, Alistair. 20-year oh, anniversary. Yeah, 20-year anniversary. Yeah. You could just do a bit of a circuit that week. And, that's, yeah. and Tom, you will present this. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure I'm that that motivated to go and watch videos of that grand final. <laughs> I'm sure it won't it will get played. Yeah, no. Oh, no right. I'm sure that. Nah. Pe- pe- people won't reflect on the past nah. if that happens. But, nah. uh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, no, just looking at the finals road, Matt, we could get a Tom Potential. Rockliffe Cup. Yeah, and you'll obviously on. present the cup on a grand and, final day yeah, because you've got the foundations. The Norm Smith, I'd probably do it all. That and, day, I would have thought. And no matter Coach. who wins, you just go into whoever's the winners, rooms. The winners' rooms. Yeah, just change your scarf. Yeah, <laughs> why you go? Oh, happy yeah. days, happy days. Anything uh, else you got from the weekend, Tom? That's the right. only thing that I want to talk about, which we've probably belted for a number of weeks mm. and, and years now, I think the MRO needs a major overhaul. It's been yeah. in, in place the Matrix system for twenty years. I think now it, it's. Out of date and yeah. needs a major overall. Oh. You can't have two incidents on the weekend. I think it was Owies and Jones. Mm. And almost identical tackles. Owie gets always gets a free kick for holding the ball and then gets a weak. And Jones is the perfect one arm pin. The tackle that we've all said all season is a weak. No matter the it, head goes into the ground and then he gets a fine. Like the confusion around that is just it's got to go out of the game. We can't have incidents like that. Andrew Dillon was on 360 last night, so we're recording this on a Tuesday morning, and I'm pretty sure he hinted that there is going to be a review of the yeah. MRO and that the system is slightly outdated, given that it does date back to, I think, the last tribunal hurrah involves this uh, gentleman. The, oh, uh, yeah, general, right, yeah. But the, but the <laughs> ma- ma- <laughs> matrix system, yeah, no, it, it, is, it needs is, to go. It, it's an old system. Oh, like, it doesn't need to go. It needs an overhaul and change what somewhat because you can't have oh. – Everyone in the game being confused about a perfectly executed tackle, yeah. whether it's a week or not. How, how do, do you define that though? Because it's become so, because we've spoken plenty of times this year on the show, we've talked about rules within rules within rules. Um, how would you define it? How would you work on precedent? How would you work on consistency? Because obviously like any uh, court system, you want precedent and you want consistency. So how would you do it if you're reshaping the MRO? I didn't actually, yeah, I mean, on a different mm. tangent, I suppose, I, I don't know whether Cadman's head hit the ground, did it, yeah. really? No. Cause, and, I, and I didn't mind that, um, that Jones, I, I was looking at, yeah, and pro- probably across the board in recent weeks we are looking at and saying, is that worth one week? Yeah. And I didn't think Jones's one was a one-week suspension, um, but that means probably the other ones were, were the same. So, yeah, I, I get that it needs an overhaul. I think – with a matrix, it's hard to just put everything into a category every time. I think there still needs to be a a vibe, a feel. A vibe. Yeah. <laughs> the vo- we need the Marbo. Well, absolutely. <laughs> I think you, you look at it and go, well, yeah, I know it ticks a lot of boxes, but, yeah, I don't think it's it's not a suspension. Well, I- and also, I think we need to um, keep in mind we're giving a penalty f- to miss the next game. I think we've got to keep in in context or in consideration finals as well. Which I think they have, haven't they? I think I, I think I they think, always will I think they most appeal do. and get off. Um, mm-hmm. And I agree with you, Lynch. I don't think either of them should have been suspended. Yeah. But I've also argued that I don't think Harley Reid should have been and other ones because, yes, their head may hit, but it's going to happen sometimes in the game. And I don't think that – see, my interpretation, I don't think it was, they were slinging actions. No. Like I think they were, they were more dropping and dragging someone to the ground. I reckon we, we haven't seen the slinging action – much this year at all. No. I mean, like Dangerfield got off. His was very, very much a drop down, almost hold up. It's a hip drop almost yeah. like in the NRL. Can I get my crystal ball out? We're going to see a bump or a certain tackle happen in a preliminary final this year. There's no doubt. Someone's <laughs> going to get a week from the MRO 
and then we're going to find something at the tribunal the Thursday the night before of a major player playing that weekend. Well, if there's Without a bump, doubt, you, just, you just pull out the Cochin vision, don't you? And so well, you, you, we go. refer to the case of Cochin <laughs> versus Shield. We refer yeah. to this. We refer to that. We well, refer to Hall versus Maguire if you really want to go I think that it deep. 2001, I think the qualifying finals. Yeah, I Matthew think. Lloyd headbutted Darren Gasper. Well, Matthew Lloyd and myself both got one-week suspensions when yep. normally during yeah, the season three. they would have absolutely – you get a finals been. discount plus the grand final. But no, and I think that's understandable though because mm. it is a huge penalty to miss a final. Mm. So to miss one final for so like three but then, weeks. But then there's the consistency argument and then there's the precedent argument. But that's where I reckon well. it should, it's got to be weighted. Mm. It's got to be weighted. That's and, why I thought Houston and I know Port Adelaide boss, I thought he should have probably got three or four instead of the five to complete. I thought it was a three. Yeah, I no, think it's three. Like I didn't think he got him flush on the chin whether he did or not, but I thought maybe three because he's going to miss. Yeah, at, at least two finals, potentially yeah. three or four. Well, well yeah. I look forward to on grand final week, uh, on our grand final week edition of this show, going through which poor bugger has to face the tribunal on the Thursday night to appeal their one or two game sentence handed down mm-hmm. by Chris O. So it's always part of the fun. It's yes. basically as part of the week as the parade and the uh, Brownlow. The, the funny thing with that, like you've got an MRO, what's yeah. his role in fact? In the fact well, that there's a matrix, isn't it just like you just follow the matrix down? Well, that's, yeah, that's his role, isn't it? Just I mean, to follow the matrix. Well, it used, well, to, be, used to be a panel. That, yeah, there used to be a panel yeah. and they'd make up a decision whether it was – but then the, the matrix and then it was opinion. So is he just is he just deciding whether it's low, medium or high? Just going or, back to the trial. I think so. And I think they have those spotters at every game yeah. that watch the game. I want that job. That would be easy. You want, you want that job? <laughs> How hard what, could it be? The just AFL following your nose, squad? Don't you? <laughs> well, I think you, you – I think you – Identify as the spotter, you identify the incident and refer it to Chris O to tick the box. Is that the umpire's observer who does that? Or no, is that... no, it's a. Oh, so there's a legit bunch of dobbers. Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, You'd uh, be good at that, Dill. <laughs> oh, you would? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you? That's a good time. <laughs> so right. turn right. the clock back to your school days yeah. when you used to dob on the, I, I was the, not a the big boys. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. Left, no. left at three quarter time would be no good. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> I did that. You did the first three quarters. <laughs> yeah, that, that, well, yeah, that's why. It's a fourth quarter amnesty, just away you go. Uh, <laughs> that's very good. Very good. Uh, I was not a dobber. <laughs> Come on. You uh, did a couple of times. No, no, never dobbed. Never dobbed. Audio. You don't dob, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number one. Snitches. Sni- exactly. Snitches get stitches. This is Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. You're listening to Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. You are listening to Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions, Dylan Leach, Alistair Lynch, Tom Rockliffe with you. Now, we've parked the snapshot for the week. Ryan's just doing some comprehensive research during the buy to make sure that, that the punters you don't, you, you learn don't and again. earn and that I do not get involved in the multi for the finals. Yeah, But that's up to Ryan. Point. That's up to Ryan. Ryan needs to turn up. He needs to shell up and turn up. We got two the week before and I got none and then we swapped roles. Yeah. So... But it's anyway. not just me. Anyway, no. moving right along. Um, now, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of trade talk during finals. I think it distracts from what's actually important at this time of the year. However, um, this is a bit of a bombshell that's going on at the moment and I think quite a sad situation. And that's obviously the Christian Petrarca wants out of Melbourne reports that are coming out at the moment and I know some people are probably saying oh Sam McClure take it with a grain of salt but I reckon there's I don't think he doesn't make stuff up he doesn't make stuff up he he has wrong opinions he gets his he gets his hot takes wrong occasionally I won't pick him Mitch pick him yeah and and Dustin Martin's been playing for the Gold Coast for seven years but this is not that this is a superstar Norm Smith medal winning grand final basically off his own boot generational Melbourne Football Club superstar who got injured uh, in Queen's birthday and now apparently wants out of Melbourne. Um, I want to get a couple of thoughts from you blokes on this because you two have left clubs um, as favourite sons. (laughs) Well, you were, like you were an ex-captain and Lynchy, you um, were – the probably Fitzroy's biggest player at the time when you left in '93. Different, different era and different yeah. circumstances and whatnot. So, what I'll ask you first before we get 
into the Petrarca situation is what goes through your mind when you decide you want to leave your club? When do you know it's time to go? Well, I knew when the offer came through from Brisbane that I couldn't remain there um, on the basis that they'd obviously made up their mind that they no longer wanted me. Um, okay. So I, so my, very different to what Christian Petrarca is. Yeah, well, my initial was to stay at Brisbane, but um, so I think I signed a contract in, say, 2013 or 14 for three years and then – um, the pay had gone up and I think I got offered – I was all Australian and the club captain in that period and got offered a, say, 200K pay cut, which didn't really sit right. So, yeah, that's not great. Um, for me, it was sort of the writing was on the wall and then it was, all right, then well, who's interested and then you go and have meetings. So it happens. It, it happened a fair way out for me. Um, because there was trade speculation about you but like a year or two before you a left year before, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then – I felt like I had a point to prove and wanted to stay and felt really good under Fags, but it was clear that the club was going in a different direction um, and I wasn't part of it, which is fine and and was happy with the outcome. Loved my time at Port Adelaide as well. But you, you start to meet with clubs, um, started probably mid-season. They'll fly someone up or you'll have Zoom calls or you'll have phone calls. Um, I flew down to Adelaide. I was in Melbourne, catch up with... I caught up with Geelong in an apartment. You caught up with Carlton up here. So you, you have meetings with different clubs. Um, it, it happens all the time um, and you head in the sand if you, you think it doesn't, particularly when finals are gone um, for us, which that year I think we might have got the spoon in 2017. But, did, yeah. um, so you, you just start to meet and then it's about negotiating and working out what's right for you and mm. – um, for me, it felt like Port Adelaide was the, the right decision for, for me and my family at the time. And you, Alistair, you, of course, got the Godfather deal uh, from the Bears back yeah. in the day, different circumstances, but you you were a favourite son at Fitzroy. You, you know, a lot of kids would have had number 11 that back for Fitzroy on their jumper and whatnot. What was that like when you knew it was, that it was time to go? And obviously the circumstances of Fitzroy, completely different to what Melbourne is and everything. Like you, well, know, to start you, with you didn't have to sweat out Melbourne. Christian Petrarca's not sweating out if he's getting paid or not or no. things like that. And they've been playing finals in yeah, recent exactly. times and um, their club's secure. I was never entertaining moving um, mm -hmm. for a long period of time. And then with the expansion of the AFL and um, – yeah, the AFL, I think Paul Ruse and I went to the AFL, well, we did, and uh, asked about underwriting our contracts if we fell over because there was a lot of issues with um, payments and, um, yeah, they, they wouldn't and they said, you know, if you fall over, you're on your own sort of thing. So there's a number of things that stacked up and then I got, yeah, that ridiculous offer. So that was the hardest decision I've ever made, even though it was, you know, I got my pay tripled and um, contract for 10 years. It still was an incredibly hard decision to leave because of those passionate supporters that hang in there every week and through the ups and downs. So, now that was very difficult, very difficult. I'll, I'll back that up. Even when I left, it was still a tough decision and I knew I was leaving for more money, et cetera. It's still – it's hard. Oh, bloody oath, it's hard. And yeah. especially you would have gone through it, Fitzroy. I went through a tough time at Brisbane. We were mm. on the bottom for a lot of it and you feel like you're starting to come out the other side. Yeah, difficult. <clears throat> so the case of Christian Petrarca, um, and I'll read from the article in The Age, uh, three uh, club sources and two closes, close to Petrarca, speaking on the condition of Adam Ritterty, as a bit yeah. editorial guy like, um, said that the falling out with the club appears to be beyond repair. The same sources said Petrarca was, uh, Petrarca was unlikely to formally request a trade because of the difficulty of a deal getting done and because a public request would inflame his relationship with the demons. Well, the cat's out of the bag now. This is this is really sad. I think this is really sad because, um, and and there was those points last night on Footy Classified, and you were talking to us before we did the show about him wanting to play. I want to play with big crowds. I want to play for a big club. This is a guy that. Just about every Melbourne player, Melbourne player and fan worships, goes to the football to see, is as much a heart and soul player. Well, could have been. He won't be anymore if he moves. Uh, is a heart and soul player of the Melbourne Football Club. Like I'd go back to a Robbie Flower. I'd go back to a David Neitz, David Schwartz. Schwartz. These types of players. These are the types of players for a club 
that, okay, they haven't seen a lot of success, but they did get a premiership and God, that he, his 10-minute beast mode in the second half of the 2021 Grand Finals is a good GF performance you'll ever see. Um, this is going to break the hearts of Melbourne and this is akin to, it might be an exaggeration, but this is the kind of stuff that like Melbourne's got a history of. This is like Norm Smith. Well, this is like Norm Smith being sacked. This is like, like even I even remember when they traded Shane Wo Woden, and that broke a lot of hearts there too. Brownlow medalist. Yeah. I think if what's being reported is true, if. I think I think, and I hope it's if. I think it's on Petrarca. And going back to your first point, relationships are mendable. Time will heal that. Mm. So I think they can move past that. If he is to stay, if whatever's happened, and. If what's being reported about Christian and he wants to go there to play somewhere else to play in front of big crowds, um, they haven't been as successful since that grand final. Well, that's a little bit on him as well. He's part of the playing group. He's got to go out there and perform. Um, he's handling the handling of the Oliver stuff. You you agree with that? Probably wasn't ideal, um, but he wants to build the Petrarca brand. Well. You're going to do brand? that anyway. Like you, you, through his channels, I think he's got a cooking channel or something like that. You're going to do yeah. that anyway. And his profile is big enough. By swapping from Melbourne Footy Club, he's a Norm Smith medalist, one of the most recognisable players in the competition, to swap to Carlton. It's not going to boost your profile. Well, everyone's sorry. Carlton's being reported as the only club that probably can do it. I think I think it reeks, if that's true, of just – me, 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 doesn't it? Like you've got. That's to- why I can't believe that he, he's made a comment that he wants to go and build his brand. Yeah, and surely not. Right. Surely so, not. So they're saying in his exit review, this is what he said, and then he wants to move on to um, different pastures. But I just can't see see that being real. In the fact that, in, in my opinion, I've never played with a teammate that would have said I want to move somewhere to build my brand. I can understand playing in front of big crowds and whatnot. And, but and sorry, moving, Melbourne, moving Melbourne, you do success. play in front of big yeah. crowds. They've got Anzac the Eve. They've got, yeah. You get to play yeah. the MCG 14 times no, a year. You've got Anzac Eve. You've got uh, that's Queen's bir- a King's birthday, I should say. I'm understanding of yeah. the fact that a player could say, oh, I want to play in front of big crowds. But you're going from, say, North Melbourne or Brisbane or yeah. the yeah. Giants or the Gold Coast to yeah. a big club in Melbourne. I get that. But from Melbourne to Carlton, it's, it's no real difference. And you've yeah. won a flag. Like, Oh, you've won a flag in you. Got some high class and, norm, and a Norm Smith medal. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I just think there is no way on earth if I was Melbourne Football Club, I'd be trading him. You got a long term deal. I'll, I'd be saying, I'd be putting it to him. If he's got some gripes with the club, which you know, apparently he has, I'd be saying, you sit down with a couple of people that you're confident with and I'd be thinking Gorn and Viney who from the outside look like incredible leaders uh, for that football club Mm. sitting down with them and work through what the issues are and get some changes made and sort of go from whatever changes you you need to do but you're staying at this footy club and we're going to rebuild so if it means you want to be successful instead of saying i'm out go speak to dan houston to yeah. convince him to come to your club for valid reasons and trying to build it that way there's no way if you get two first round draft picks for petrarca for example well cameron was three wasn't he to Geelong. well say say three you go to every draft hoping that you want it your first rounders is going to be a star it happens every eight or nine years that you yeah. get a real genuine star and at that level it's, it's generational as you as you said so there's no way i'd be rolling the dice i'll be saying that you, you're here it's got have to be what six years still yeah maybe it's six years and he signed a seven-year deal didn't he yeah the, the, the mis- couldn't do it the injury mismanagement i find a funny one as well. So is that on the day that he feels like he was sent back out there when he shouldn't have been or is it post that? Because then he's in hospital like because that that keeps coming up as well, the mismanagement of the injury. I've played in games where I've been injured and shouldn't shouldn't have gone back out there or played potentially when I shouldn't have. I've had two weeks off when I broke three of my ribs and probably came back too early. But that's a little bit on the player, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say that, that that's our call yeah. mostly. You know, the, the doctors are great and, and they're pretty cautious with yeah. you and you've got to say to the doctor, and it was with the old concussion rule as mm. well. Well, there's no concussion rule. So, no, I'm right. I'm, and so we don't know the situation that uh, Christian found himself in, mm-hmm. but I, I'd be um, staggered if it was a match day. I, would, I thought he said that he wanted to go back out. I would be blown away if he didn't want to go back out there and the doctors and the medical team ticked it off and said, no, he's good to go, push him back out there. I would be yeah. absolutely yeah. gobsmacked because I've never seen that. Like the doctor is super cautious with you on the boundary, particularly around 
internal stuff. If I would be blown away if the doctor said go out there against his will. We talk about Christian Petrarca's brand and what you'll see if Christian Petrarca, and I'm talking from a fan perspective here, not ex-player perspective, that's why I'm here. The If Christian Petrarca moved clubs, if people thought the scenes about what Jason Horn Francis copped for leaving North Melbourne, if actually a good example um, involving Melbourne, a lot of people reflect on the time uh, Tom Scully, number one draft pick, left Melbourne for GWS. Worst kept secret in football that was. But when he returned as a GWS player um, uh, for the first time against Melbourne, a lot of GWS people said the scenes that the Melbourne fans gave him were not nice. Like, yes, he was booed. There was people like throwing money at him. Jeez. There was there was people throwing their <laughs> throwing their cheese boards and whatnot. But if Petrarca moved, yeah, he if, if if for a bloke that's on social media a lot, for a bloke that next time if he's playing for Carlton against Melbourne, it, it does the Ron Barassi, should mm. I say? It's not going to be pretty for him. And his brand will be his brand will not be enhanced. His brand will be tainted. I, if I he moves so. like that, his brand will be tainted. I think it's starting to take a hit now because he yeah. hasn't come out and spoken, and because he is so prevalent on social media, mm. like it's simple for him if it's not true to come out and just put it on there. Video yeah. will take two seconds. Well, he was supposed to do an interview yeah, on Friday night and pulled the pin. Well, he's saying that Melbourne pulled the pin. Melbourne is saying he pulled the pin last minute. He's supposed to do a Channel 7 yep. interview with um, their team and I think he got, well, from the reports is that he got wind that Mitch Cleary was going to be there so he didn't want to face the reporter side of it. Yep. He thought it was yep. just going to be ex-players and, and soft butter-up questions. But it's quite simple for him to n- knock it on the head. So the more it festers and starts to build, I think the more truth well, there yeah, is he, to it. He, he's posted on social media in the past 24 hours and that's just promoting something he's going to be at. So does he want to be a champion footballer or does he want to be an influencer? I, I cannot believe I'm saying stuff like this, but if you are requesting a trade because of your brand, because you want to play in front of big crowds and whatnot, I sincerely hope that's not true. Well, but regardless, you're not trading him. No. The, you know, well, hang on, Alistair. I believe you said that maybe Melbourne should give him three more years and he can have a chat with you in 2028. <laughs> like oh, Gary Lyons' on. idea yeah. is, is not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you're not trading him. No. You're not, not, not trading him in the slightest. Um, you just, no, nah, you, you're staying. Do and it. if he sits out, he sits out. I, I don't get you're not the, trading him. I don't get the brand thing because no, it's it, huge anyway. It's huge. And you're not going to all of a sudden get all these new followers you or. You literally have a golden Petrarca <laughs> on the set. Like, and don't you want, I mean, you want to be in a club that gives you a chance to play finals and be successful. He's got that. Does he no longer believe that? Is, is there well, maybe is there bit, is there more going under the surface at Melbourne? That's probably the question that needs well, to be answered. It's been bubbling away for a couple of years, you really. Got, so it probably is. You, the leaders like um, Gorn, who looks like a star, Gorn and Viney, get, get yeah. in and sort it out. What yeah. and if there's people who've got to be moved on, um, you've got to you make the call. But you you can't let a great player go. And those great leaders have got to stand up and say, hang on, there's things going on here that mm. we've got to change, if that's the case. Yeah. But there must be. Well, you've got the Smith incident who's still out, Oliver. Neil Bourne's requested a trade to go home for family reasons, which, again, it's, it can be a, a quick and easy way to get home mm. if needed. I'm not saying he's doing that. Um, no, I know what you mean. But, yeah. Um, so they they may need to address some stuff, but I find like well, the, you, you look yeah. at Bryson DeChambeau, right? So he's a world superstar yeah. who does both plays golf. He, he shifted to live because the restraints of the PGA would not allow him to. He had to play X amount of weekends, and he's got more freedom, and he's got his golf YouTube channel now, sure. etc. That's not going to change for Christian whether he plays at Melbourne or Carlton or um, Essendon or Collingwood. He's still going to have the same sort of restraints within the AFL, but his his brand is not going to be well, his brand will be tainted. Not going to explode because he moves no. to Carlton. So I find that side of it just and, staggering. Mm. And he wouldn't get booed by just Melbourne fans. No, when and he's playing for Carlton against a Richmond or a Collingwood or even a Port Adelaide or whatnot, it, it, if if people thought what was happening to Horn Francis was unfair, I'm telling you, Petrarca will cop it. Well, that's why if if all these rumours and supposed and I hope comments 
uh, are not true. And he needs to come out and clarify that. And, and he should that. do it this week because otherwise it's going to be a very. I mean, I'm Who's sure. I'm week? sure the. Um, <laughs> I'm sure our my colleagues who cover trades and rumours and speculation for a living and this is their Christmas right now oh, uh, would be loving the idea of two months of Christian Petrarca moving content. But well, just two weeks. Well, there's no games to talk about this week, so that's it's going to well, be injuries and it'd be the this. biggest trade in history. Yeah. On on the basis that he's got say six years left, like you understand, like there's been big player movement in the past, but Jeremy Cameron's out of contract. Yeah, yeah. Like, and Harry Mackay's got a yeah. Harry Mackay's been speculating. Well, he's on, he's a poster boy now for the trade because it's like well, Melbourne need a key forward, so they have a final to play. It's yeah, um, <laughs> that's the, someone's made that up. Uh, Harry it's just Mackay yeah. just speculating. Yeah, well, that's I think right. his manager came out and said that we've had no contact from Carl mm. to indicate that. No, I just no, I just think that's. If if this eventuates, this is going to be a, this is going to be ugly and it's going to be sad. Does Carlton need him in no. the fact that their midfield like he, like he's a superstar player? Anyone would take him, so it's not whether. But like they've, you've got Paddy Cripps in there, who's potentially going to win his second Brownlow. Walsh, they've got a good midfield mix. Yeah, I don't it know. Doesn't add anything. Start um, very different to that midfield mix, doesn't no. it? it Oh, like he's, inside. You, any team would have him. Oh, but, yeah. But yeah. anyway, wouldn't be trading him. Watch this space. Time to wrap up on Ned's AFL and popular opinions. Time to wrap up on Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. Now, boys, I usually ask what you're looking forward to this weekend, but there's no AFL. However... AFLW kicks off on uh, Friday night. Tom, are you doing special comms again? No, I'm not. No? no I was, but um, no, yeah, pull, okay. pull the pin. Oh, okay. Well, looking forward to that. Uh, I think first game is uh, Sydney versus Collingwood at North Sydney Oval, which is a awesome venue to go and watch football at. It's one of the most beautiful picturesque venues. What I will say about AFLW, and I reckon you guys would agree with me here, is that there's probably a few people a bit don't really follow it. It's like if you follow AFLW like men's footy, you're going to hate it. But if you accept it for what it is as a different kind of competition and a different atmosphere and a different vibe, I think you really enjoy it. They're a lot nicer, the fans. The crowds at <laughs> AFLW are so pleasant. Like we talk, I mean, we had idiots obviously with the bot. You, you won't be seeing anyone throw bottles at goal umpires at AFLW grounds. No. But it's also, it's also a really good way to get. To, you know, if you want to take your kids or your partner and whatnot, it's such a pleasant and day And the out. standard is going yeah. through the roof. Yeah, there's some absolutely yeah. superstars. Monty, think- Monty, the uh, BNF by Richmond, she's a superstar. Oh, you're back on Richmond now, yeah. are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Richmond AFLW. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, yeah. um, but no, so um, and there's other sports. Watch the Paralympics starts this week. You can watch that. That's always a big weekend. Are you jetting away again? No, Turn no, not doing, not doing the Paras. I uh, needed to – Ned's, Ned's wanted me back. So, not, <laughs> did not, they? Yeah, they did. You sure? Lucky because I lost my voice. That yeah. Was yeah, I think that's, <laughs> that's why the hosting that's job it. was up for grabs. <laughs> no, the, the Paralympics is also a good watch as well. And uh, we're in Brisbane. We've got the River Fire this weekend as well. Yes, oh, okay. oh, and there you go. <laughs> there you go. Lots of fireworks. Plenty to do on the week off. What of a day. And off. local footy finals. Local well, footy fans kicking off too. Dolphins. Uh, Dolphins Broncos. Oh, yeah. On that's huge. Saturday. Hey, um, we normally do a multi. And we will do one this week, but I figured what we'll do is we'll beat the NRL show at their own game. And that way we can get Lynchy Rightio. back on in it. So in. Uh, it's a big weekend of rugby league because there's no <laughs> AFL men's. So, um, boys, what are we going with on our rugby league multi? I'm going to kick off Friday night. Seagulls yeah. cough one up last week. Bulldogs flying, but I'm going to go Manly head-to-head at 2.40. That's at ANZ Stadium, I, yeah. I I'm gonna, get it done. Oh, so that's on the 6 p.m. because I've got double headers on yeah, Friday night. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock on the rugby league. Uh, now, I well, Penrith, they need to get back on the winner's list. They've had a couple of losses. They've missed the minor premiership. Uh, they're currently sitting in fourth uh, below Lynchy Sharkies, but I reckon they should get the job done over the Bunnies. Uh, on uh, Friday night at right, the line. Yeah. So I'll take them on the line, 17 and a half. So Ooh, Cleary. Clock. No Cleary factor. No Cleary, but they'll they'll need to get back into winning before the finals. They certainly never, do. ever ride off the Panthers. And Lynchy. All right, I'll go the no Paul Gowan factor. I'll go Cronulla Sharks. He hasn't played for five years. Hasn't he? No. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Cronulla Sharks at the line, 13 and a half points against the New Zealand Warriors. Well, that's at Shark Park in Cronulla. Are you yeah. be watching that? Yes, no, I absolutely will. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. guarantee They're you will. third on the ladder at the moment, the uh, Sharkies. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, so they'll be right. They'll yeah. cover the line. <laughs> Could be a Storm Sharkies grand final. Wouldn't you love that? They'll cover the line by half time. If the Sharks make the grand final, will you be travelling down to Sydney for that? You wouldn't miss it for well, right? You wouldn't have thought. No, I don't think I can get a ticket. Oh, I okay. no. I did go to a... Um, Dude, that was a big one. We had the um, the grand the NRL grand final was the week after our third premiership. So we had a a whopper. No, it was our yeah third yeah, whopper. premiership. You went to Hungry Jacks. Went to a went to <laughs> had a whopper all week. Yep. And the boys gave me a call and said uh, we're off to Sydney. Ooh. And so we went to the airport, flew to Sydney, and went to watch the Penrith victory back in those days. So 2003, yeah. So it was about yep. nine days in. What year did you go to the sunny coast? 2002, three? Yeah. After it? Because I was stayed across the road from these boys when they won it. Did you? I was on a family holiday. And oh, yeah, it wasn't me, I don't reckon. You didn't go there? Nah. It was pretty <laughs> much everyone. There was, was a lot there, yeah. A couple of us old up, blokes uh, didn't uh, probably go. Anyway, yeah, so yeah. Right. we. Let's wrap up. Let's recap our multi this week. So NRL show, we're coming for you. We're having a crack at a rugby league multi. So that's uh, Manly head-to-head, Penrith to cover at 17.5, Cronulla Sharks to cover at 13.5, $8.66. And that AFL Unpopular Opinions NRL multi is available on the AFL section in the Neds app. (laughs) I wouldn't advise jumping on. I would rewind (laughs) if you want to actually get the details of what I just said. We've got to wrap up. It's been a great hit out in our new set. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Dill. Thank Thanks you, Dill. Alistair. Rocky. Thanks, Thanks Rich. Enjoy your week off. Thanks, team. Next week, we'll actually talk some proper footy because the finals will be on. We'll catch you then. Thanks for listening to Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. Enjoyed the podcasts? Remember to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au.